Welcome to the Centre for Christian Spirituality and thank you for joining us as we reflect on the Gospel reading for the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let's first listen to the reading from the Gospel assigned for today. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In, in that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her request. I, sorry, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones? who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This little incident's about prayer. And in some ways it just repeats something that has been said earlier in that little section where um, Luke, Luke um, tells us about the prayer that Jesus taught to the disciples. The first thing there is that we are to pray continually and not give up. I think the, the judge there is looked upon as un, un, unrighteous because he only gives justice um, to you know, stop himself being disturbed. Um, but the point being made is that the widow, and Luke has a, an affection for widows, um, by her persistence, she actually gets the justice done that needs to be done. So I, I think the first message that we've got there is the persistence. Earlier in the Gospel, uh, Luke expressed it about the man that had gone to bed, and uh, or he's in bed with all his children, and uh, the man, man next door came wanting some bread for visitors, but um, it was only after he kept knocking that so the man got up and gave him the bread. Mm. So it's, it's telling us that we should always pray. And it doesn't mean that we've got to be uh, saying prayers all the time or even praying in our heart all the time. But I think it means that there needs to be in our life a consistent attitude to prayer and that prayer should be a normal part of our life, just as any two people who are very close friends mm -hmm. will express their affection in various ways. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the, the point that's being made. Earlier again, uh, Luke's other point about prayer is not only that it be, there be persistence, but also that there be confidence. And the second part that follows the story about the man that was in bed with his children, um, that's where we find those words of Jesus, seek and you will find, knock and it shall be delivered unto you. Um, so that you've got confidence in doing that. And that's the point of, of the second part of, the, of the, um, uh, this text. And Luke makes a point often of saying, well look, here's what a human person will do, imagine how much more a God divine do. person yeah. will do. Yeah. And that's the confidence dimension. So I think those two things that are there, and that have already been expressed, uh, are quite important messages about prayer yeah. and are as relevant today as they were at the time yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, David. The word persistence was something that kept coming to me and, and uh, thinking it's, it's, n um, it's that we don't give up and our prayer is not something that's a hit and miss thing but it's how we um, incorporate prayer into all that our life is about. I think as Ed Hayes used to speak of, we pray always, yeah. and we pray always. And it just seems to me that uh, the challenge is, is not to give up. Yeah. And in that way, perhaps it's, it's not God who changes and, and uh, gives in, but rather I come more to understand um, uh, God in, in my life, and I am much more open to, yes. to receive that which God has in store or ha ha is gifting me.
Mm. Interestingly, I think we're all talking about the persistence mm. and often these days people talk about grit or persistence and it's mm. as though that relies on your will or your discipline. But what struck me in this mm. passage was about do not lose heart. And I think that's really important for mm. me to remember that actually prayer really my true prayer comes from my heart and mm. changes my heart and uh, I think it's a good reminder to me to losing heart means in losing that love of prayer and uh, it's not just about the discipline but it's about yeah. the love that you mm. bring to your prayer and then the, and the way it um, fills up your heart mm. and your capacity to love mm. I think prayer is always answered it's not, yeah. not always what you were praying for, oh. as it were. That's right. But I think there is never a prayer that doesn't receive some response from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you have heard David, Virginia and I share with you some of our reflections upon this reading of the Gospel. We invite you to take some time now just to reflect in the quiet of your own hearts what is it that you have heard? How do you understand this story? What is, it, what is its application to you personally? We've had some time to reflect on our response to hearing the Gospel story the first time. Let's just sit again with that word as it is proclaimed to us once more. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually complaining. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth. I'm thinking, I suppose following on from what Virginia said, that, uh, you know, the need for prayer to come from the heart, and uh, that poses a challenge. It's all okay to have things coming from the head uh, from the heart and I think I'd like to just look at how I pray and why I pray and what it is I pray for and is it something that's coming for a space that's giving God a place to be able to work in the midst of what I perceive my need and my want to be. Yes. But the text that came out to me was that last sentence there mm -hmm. uh, with, with the son of man find anybody with this sort of faith where he comes mm -hmm. yes. and I, I think it is true that um, if people don't get the obvious answers to their prayer they can feel that they're being neglected yeah. and um, turn away from God or, or perhaps lose that intimacy that's there so I felt that um, really those early words of seek knock and it shall be yeah. and those things I, I think they're things I might focus on. Mm. Yeah. And for me, I think it is that phrase around don't lose heart, and that, that persistence in it, because just as the widow yeah. persisted with yeah. the judge That's again right. and again and again yeah. and again and again, yeah. like goodness me, God doesn't have that attitude. But there is an inference that yes, you have to be at it constantly, continually, right. always, yes. all times, yeah. um, really because it is that dynamic constant relationship that mm -hmm. prayer really is it's not a one-off I didn't get it all I'll stop that it didn't work yes. no he's not talking about that at all so yeah. for me don't lose heart persist it is like that and always has been no, like that for people mm. and I think prayer sometimes we think we're too much of it as an act yes <laughs> that really it is a relationship yep. mm. and there is a time when um, 
we are more active than yep. others. As, as yeah. we grow, we become less active. Yep. But still, wherever we are, um, it's the relationship and the things we do within it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is more formal prayer yeah. or mm -hmm. things like that. Just on that point, David, just very quickly, I think thinking back to last Sunday's Gospel yeah. with the, the, the leper that came back, yeah. I mean, it was in uh, the recognition of a relationship that was also being given yes. along with healing that it changed the guy profoundly. Yeah. And that can happen to us too. Yes. But we've shared with you our thoughts of where we might like to work in our lives over the coming week. We invite you to take some time now to do that for yourself. What is it out of the word we've shared today that you would like to rest and wrestle with in the course of the days ahead? We know that what we desire and hope for and strive to do can often not find a way forward in us. We need something more than just our good intention. So let's take a moment to call upon the power of the Spirit of God to walk with us over these days that faithfulness uh, might be the outcome of what we try to do or might be seen in what we try to do. We are grateful that you have been able to take the time to join us at the Centre for Christian Spirituality as together with us we've, we have reflected upon the Gospel reading of this Sunday. Let's conclude as we customarily do with the praying of the opening prayer assigned by the Church to this 29th day of uh, in ordinary time. Almighty, ever-living God, Grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. 